Today on Alex Nottos by viewer request, we're out here taking a look at the 2015 Hyundai Sonata. This particular model is the Eco model, which is kind of an interesting twist in this segment. It has a dual clutch transmission, it also has a turbocharged engine, but it's not the sporty entry in the sedan lineup. 2015 brings substantial changes to the Sonata, not the least of which is the exterior design. We have this new front end look that's very Hyundai Genesis. The old Hyundai Sonata was a very different look. It had more flowing lines. Some people said it was a little bit more daring, but in all honesty, I sometimes thought that the old Sonata was a little bit cartoonish. I didn't think it would age terribly well, and I think this design is a little bit more restrained, a little bit more elegant. Now that said, a number of you over at facebook.com slash thought this was a little too boring, so please let me know what you think down there in the comments section down below. I think this is one of the better looking sedans in this category now, and I didn't rank the Sonata that highly in its last generation. Some models of the Sonata do get a radar adaptive cruise control system, but that's not available in the Eco model. The Eco model we're taking a look at right here also has halogen high beams and halogen low beams only. You'll notice that same sort of change to a more elegant and restrained design language, especially on the side of the Sonata. The previous Sonata had that same flowing curve that went up from the front all the way to the rear, and that's not going on in this model. This looks a little bit more Honda Accord, a little bit more Volkswagen Passat. Unlike the Chrysler 200 and the Ford Fusion, the roofline doesn't plunge as drastically towards the rear. Now this isn't quite as upright as the Toyota Camry or the Honda Accord, so we get a little bit less headroom in the back seat, but it's not as restricted as some of those sedans with that really sexy side profile. The restrained styling continues at the rear. We have these tail lamp modules which go from the body onto the tailgate, but we don't have a whole lot of swoops or other styling flourishes that we found in the previous generation Sonata. Our Eco model has a single exhaust tip right over here on the passenger side, and we also have this spoiler lip that's attached to the trunk lid. I actually think this is one of the more attractive entries in this segment, but then I tend to favor entries like the Honda Accord and the Volkswagen Passat over some of the flashier entries, so let me know what you think down there. I'm gonna have to give this nine out of 10 points when it comes to exterior style. Under the hood of this Eco model, we have a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. It produces 178 horsepower, which is a little bit less than that 2.4, but 195 pound feet of torque, which is notably more than the 2.4 and across a much broader range. Unlike Chrysler, Toyota, and Honda, Hyundai does not put a V6 under this hood in any model. If you want the up level engine, that's a two liter turbocharged engine, produces 245 horsepower and 260 pound feet of torque. You'll notice that's a little bit less horsepower than some of those V6s, but it's actually about the same amount of torque. There are two different transmissions depending on the engine that you get. The two liter turbocharged engine and the 2.4 liter base engine both use a traditional six speed automatic transaxle, sending power right here to the front wheels. There's no all wheel drive offered in the Sonata at this time. If you choose this 1.6 liter turbocharged engine, then we get a brand new seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Internally, it's very much like a manual transmission. In fact, it's actually like two manual transmissions working together, but it does shift automatically, so you just put the car in drive and drive it away. The big reason for using a dual clutch automatic is because it improves not only performance, but also fuel economy, because there's no torque converter. It's instead replaced by those twin clutches. Fuel economy is fairly average in this segment for the 2.4 and the 2.0T models. It comes in at 25 miles per gallon city, 37 highway, and 29 combined for the 2.4 liter engine, drops down to 26 miles per gallon combined for that two liter turbo. Now, fuel economy will drop an additional one mile per gallon if you get the limited trim in either of those two engines because we get wider tires. For this 1.6 liter turbocharged model, it comes in at 28 miles per gallon city, 38 highway, and 32 combined, which does place it towards the top of the pack. Hyundai uses all the tricks to get the maximum in terms of fuel economy. We have a dual clutch transmission, we have a small displacement turbocharged engine, and we have narrower tires. These are 205 width tires even on our fully loaded Eco model. The tire width and the use of low rolling resistance tires really help contribute to the handling abilities or lack of handling abilities in Eco trims all across the board. These are significantly smaller than you'll find in the limited trim of the Sonata, which does use 235 width tires. Front seat comfort comes in at eight out of 10 points. The midsize stand segment is largely known for very comfortable front seats. These are definitely the kinds of vehicle that you wanna take a road trip in. These seats are on par with the Ford Fusion. I think they rank a little bit above the Volkswagen Passat. These are, however, a little bit less comfortable than the Nissan Altima or the Honda Accord. Our model has the multi-way power driver's seat with a two position lumbar support. But one thing to keep in mind is that this lumbar support is positioned very low in the seat, not really where your lumbar are. They're a little bit higher on the back. We do have a tilt telescopic steering column with a large range of motion, which makes it a lot easier for shorter or taller drivers to find an ideal driving position. Some models of the Sonata do have a multi-position driver's seat memory. Rear seat comfort comes in at eight and a half points out of 10. If you're a child, you'll find these rear seats a little bit more comfortable than adults. The seat bottom cushion is a little bit closer to the floor. 
However, that does mean I have adequate headroom at six feet tall in the rear. My hair is just barely brushing the ceiling. That's more than you'll find in the Chrysler 200 or the Ford Fusion, which do really have limited headroom in the back. But it's not as much as you'll find in the Camry or the Accord because they have a very upright profile. Now the Camry and the Accord also have seat bottom cushions that are a little bit higher off the ground. Again, that's enabled by this higher profile. If I scoot over to the right side of the vehicle, this front seat was adjusted for a six foot five passenger. It's all the way back in its tracks. And I have an adequate amount of legroom back here. That's good for forward or rearward facing child seat installation. If you want to know more about how well child seats fit, just go ahead and click that banner on the sidebar. you will be taken on over to that video. Scooting on over to the middle seat, we do have a slight hump in the Sonata, but I still have an adequate amount of headroom. In fact, I actually have a little bit more headroom than the outboard seats just because of the way this ceiling is shaped. Keep in mind that our particular model does not have the optional sunroof. As with most mid-size stands, we do have split 60-40 folding rear bench seats. These do fold completely flat with the rear bench, but not with the rear cargo area. It is a little bit higher than that rear cargo area, so you would have to push things uphill in order to get them right back here. Rear passengers also get a generously sized and softly padded rear armrest with two large fixed cup holders. When it comes to cargo capacity, the Sonata is a little bit deceptive because it does not appear that the trunk is that much larger than the competition. However, it's all about cargo practicality for this vehicle. This is very much like the Nissan Altima in that respect, because in the Altima, a 24 inch roller bag right like this, this is the largest carry-on bag you can carry on a domestic flight, will fit in the Altima's trunk in this position, and you can close the trunk lid. Now, not only can you do that in this Sonata, but you can also take this same bag and you can rotate it 90 degrees right like that and still close the trunk lid. You can actually line up about four of them across the back still close the trunk. If that's not enough, they have sized this so that a 26 inch roller bag, this would have to be checked on a domestic flight, will actually fit in the trunk completely behind this bag. And again, you can still close the trunk lid. Depending on the thickness of your 26 inch roller bag, you can stack two of them behind there, but they would have to be a little bit on the thin side. Because we're in the Eco model, if I lift up this cargo load floor, you will find a tire mobility kit only, which is basically a can of fix a flat and an inflator, and this additional cargo storage divider. You do have room, obviously, to put a full size spare tire if you wanted to buy one afterwards, but it doesn't come with the Eco model. When it comes to my exclusive trunk comfort index, we lose half a point and get nine and a half points out of 10 because this cargo load floor doesn't seem as robust as some of the competition out there. We do have an incredibly large amount of storage space. We also have those fold flat rear bench seats and an assist handle to help you close the trunk lid. Starting out our detailed look at the interior, we have two-way adjustable headrests. These remind me a great deal of the form factor that Saab used to use. We also have height adjustable seat belts for both the driver and the front passenger. Our model has the optional leather interior. It is perforated for a little bit better breathing on the seat back and the seat bottom cushion. The front doors are made from a mixture of hard and soft touch plastics. We have faux wood trim running right along here by the door handle, soft touch plastics in this gray upper, soft touch plastics right here in the middle, separated by a band of hard touch plastics that wraps around right there, soft touch armrest and hard touch plastics below for the speaker grill, as well as the storage cubby right there below the door handle. The overall design is clean and simple, reminds me a great deal of Volkswagen and other German products, soft touch injection molded upper dashboard, hard touch lower, and then we have a very large glove box right down here. It is sort of the bin arrangement that folds out of the dashboard. I was able to fit a tablet computer inside. Starting at the top of the dashboard, keep in mind that our Eco model has the $4,100 option package, which does include this large 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system. This is a really new software package for Hyundai, so if you want to know more about it, go ahead and click that banner at the bottom of your screen. There is a detailed infotainment review that's separate from this video review. You'll find the SD card for the map database right over here on this side, single slot optical disc player, eject button. This display button turns on and off this display. Again, we have this large 8-inch color touchscreen. Below the touchscreen is where you'll find the buttons for the infotainment system. They're spread all the way across this large center console. Power and volume knob right over here. Tune and file knob right over here for browsing around your media selections. Below that button bank, our model has the two zone climate control system and heated seats for both the driver and the front passenger. Below the climate control, we have a storage cubby with a lid right over there. I'm gonna put this vehicle in drive over here so you can see more inside there. It is large enough to hold an iPhone 6 and other large smartphones. This is where you'll find the auxiliary input as well as the USB input and two 12 volt power cords. There's enough room in here for some other accessories like the key. The Eco model uses a very traditional console shifter. Drive is all the way down. Manual mode is over to the left, up for up and down for down. Small storage cubby right over here and then cup holders behind it. 
The two large cup holders easily accommodate the largest takeout sodas I was able to throw at the vehicle, and they really don't interfere with the shifter at all. Right down here, we have the drive mode selection button that allows you to choose between eco, sport, and normal mode. This affects the way the transmission and engine operate. Between the two front seats, we have a large and softly padded center armrest. I have an awful lot of things stuffed inside here. It is fairly deep, and there is an additional divider. Moving over to the driver's side, we have this very simple two-dial instrument cluster with additional digital gauges inside them. We have the engine temperature right over here on the left and the fuel gauge on the right. In between these two gauges, we have a color multi-information display. The multifunction display is controlled via this button arrangement on the steering wheel. We have the change page button right here, toggle up and down and OK. You have your typical trip A and trip B. We also have a digital speedometer. If we change pages, we will have turn-by-turn -turn navigation instructions if the navigation system is active. Right now we just have a compass. We also have AV information depending on your source. We have tire pressure display. We do have to be driving in order to get that one right there. And then you also have service reminders. Zooming out to the steering wheel, we have a four spoke design with sport grips right up here. RS is leather wrapped. On this side of the steering wheel, we have our volume up, down, track forward, backward, mode button for that radio, voice command button. We do have Siri pass through on this vehicle. We also have phone hang up and pick up buttons that are dedicated right over here. On this side, we have the same buttons I showed you earlier, and we also have our cruise control buttons to the right of them. The important thing to know about the Sonata Eco when you go out and test drive one is that this does use that dual clutch automatic transmission. As I said, a dual clutch transmission is really more of a robotically shifted manual transmission. And so it does feel more like a manual transmission than a traditional automatic. Very much like a manual transmission, you can get a tiny bit of shutter as you start off from a stop. That's because this transmission is slipping the clutch to help get you going. Gear engagement is very firm and very precise. Shifts are also very quick. That's one of the benefits of a dual clutch automatic transmission. There's also a very direct relationship between the engine RPMs and the wheel speed, and that's not something you get in a traditional automatic because they have a torque converter. Torque converters in a traditional automatic allow the input and the output shafts for the transmission to have a very non-linear relationship because that torque converter is in there to help make up the difference. That's not going on in this. That's really noticeable in low speed travel in this transmission. Low speed travel when you're in first or second gear, if you take your foot off the accelerator pedal, it can feel a little bit jerky because you start slowing down. Same feeling you get in a traditional manual transmission. For me, however, the pros outweigh the cons. Dual clutch automatics like this give you optimum acceleration and optimum fuel economy because torque converters are not terribly efficient devices. It's really obvious when we take a look at the fuel economy we've been getting in the Sonata Eco. I've been averaging 32.6 miles per gallon, which is among the best in this segment. This is not a hybrid model either. In fact, if you want better fuel economy than this, you will have to move to those hybrid entries in this segment like the Accord Hybrid or the Camry Hybrid or even the Ford Fusion Hybrid. Now this versus the Ford Fusion Hybrid, the Fusion Hybrid doesn't necessarily get that much better fuel economy. It's about two to three miles per gallon better than what I've been getting in this vehicle. Handling in this Eco trim is a little bit better than I had expected given the narrow tires that we have in this vehicle, but I'm still gonna have to give this six and a half points out of 10. This is among the lower handling vehicles in this segment. That's just the Eco model I'm talking about because if you get the Sonata Limited, then we actually get nine out of 10 points when it comes to handling. The suspension in all the Sonata models is very well sorted. This has a very European feel to it. It's a little bit firmer than I had expected. I think a little bit firmer than last generation Sonatas. Steering is numb, just like you'd expect from any midsize sedan these days with electric power steering, but the steering is very precise. It's easy to tell where the car is going at all times, and the suspension never feels unsettled over broken pavement. That was a complaint of previous generation Sonatas. When it comes to braking, I'm also going to give the Sonata Eco 6.5 points out of 10. Narrow tires definitely have an impact on your stopping distance. Fade resistance is very good across the lineup in the Sonata, and if you do get the Sonata Limited or the Sonata Sport, you're going to get wider tires, and your braking distances are going to decline. If it sounds like I'm impressed by Hyundai's 7-speed dual-clutch transmission, then you're right. This is very smooth. In fact, this is actually smoother than Ford's dual-clutch automatic that they've been trying to continually tweak in the Ford Focus. They call that the Power Shift Automatic Transmission. This transmission is almost as smooth as Volkswagen and Audi's wet-clutch DSG transmissions, which really is saying something, because Volkswagen's dry-clutch DSG transmissions haven't been this good. Dual-clutch transmissions that use a clutch that is swimming in a fluid bath, aka a wet clutch, smooth out the starting shifts. So as you're starting from a stop, you don't get as much shudder in those transmissions. However, because the clutch is rolling around in that oil bath, it decreases fuel economy. Hyundai helps solve this problem by giving this transmission seven gears. First gear is very, very low in this transmission. 
and that actually helps the starts because you don't have to slip the clutch quite as much in order to get going. Second gear is very close to first gear, but it allows the transmission to get moving and then quickly shift into second gear to help prevent some of that startup lurch that you get in the Ford Power Shift transmission. Thanks to that low first gear, we ran zero to 60 in a hair over seven seconds flat. That's very, very good for an engine with this power output figure. In fact, this is one of the faster entries in this midsize stand segment if you're talking about the four cylinder engines. Obviously the V6s and the larger turbocharged engines will get better zero to 60 times. However, many of those two liter turbos out there are not necessarily that much faster than this. In fact, some of the faster entries in this segment would be the V6 entries, and they run around six to six and a half seconds, and this is just about seven seconds. This is notably faster than many of those other four cylinder options. Not only is the Eco version faster to 60 than the 2.4 liter four cylinder engine, it's also more drivable. When we're out on winding mountain roads like this, this transmission doesn't have to downshift in order to drive up the hills. Your mileage will of course vary depending on how much city driving you do. That's really where the Hyundai Sonata Eco lets us down just a little bit compared to some of the competition because this does not have a start stop system. So if you're in stop and go traffic or if you're in true city driving stopping at stoplights, this engine won't turn off like you'll find in the Ford 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine in the Fusion, which does turn off to save gasoline at stoplights. That's also gonna be the biggest difference between this and something like the Ford Fusion Hybrid or the Toyota Camry Hybrid. This will actually probably give you the best fuel economy out on the open highway at constant speeds, especially on level terrain, but it's not gonna do as well in city driving, especially stop and go traffic. Cabin noise was a problem in the last generation Sonata and they have improved it slightly in this generation, but I still scored 71 decibels, which is a little bit louder than some of the quieter entries in this segment. When it comes to the ride, I'm gonna give the Sonata Eco nine out of 10 points. This has a very well composed ride. Again, the suspension does not feel upset over broken pavement and the relatively high profile tires on the Eco model definitely soften the ride a little bit, but because the suspension is still moderately firm for the midsize stand category, it has a very nice feel out on the road. I did not expect to like the Eco version of the Sonata as much as I do, but after driving this vehicle for a week, I can safely say this is my favorite version of the Sonata. I would probably take this over the other versions unless I was specifically looking for the features that you get in the Limited. Admittedly, if I were to buy this vehicle, I would replace the wheels and tires with something similar to what you find in the Limited trim because it does handle a little bit better. But the biggest liability in my mind for this vehicle was the dual clutch automatic transmission, and it turns out to be the biggest benefit for this vehicle. After Driving the competition's dry clutch dual clutch transmissions, I was really not expecting that much out of this particular transmission. But Hyundai really seems to have solved some of the problems that the competition has as far as drivability and smoothness in this dual clutch transmission. Now don't get me wrong, this transmission still can be a little bit jerky at low speeds. People that are in the car may still ask, dude, what's wrong with your transmission? But if you explain to them that it's a dual clutch robotically shifted manual transmission, they'll probably be fine with that. It's not as big of a difference between a traditional automatic and a dual clutch transmission as you'll find in the Ford products or the Volkswagen products with dry clutch transmissions. This is also light years better than the Mercedes-Benz dual clutch transmission that you'll find in the CLA and the GLA. Pricing for the Sonata starts at $21,150, and as is typical with Hyundai, the pricing structure is relatively simple. There are not a whole lot of standalone options like you'll find in the Chrysler or the Ford, but things offer a little bit more variety than Honda or Toyota. The Eco model that we're taking a look at here starts at $23,275, and that really is the model that I prefer. The Eco model, of course, gives you that 1.6 liter turbocharged engine, the seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. And I think there aren't really many drawbacks other than the handling. Now you can obviously replace these low rolling resistance tires with wider, grippier rubber, and that would probably be what I would do. If you want the two liter turbocharged engine, you have to start out with the sport model at $28,575. And if you want the limited fully loaded model with the two liter turbo engine, it will set you back 33,525. The model that we're taking a look at right here has only one option selected because there is only one option available in the Eco model. It's the $4,100 tech package that gives you the eight inch touchscreen infotainment display, heated leather seats, and the blind spot information system, along with a few other options. The Sonata starts about $1,700 less than a Honda Accord, and that continues across the line when you're similarly configuring them. Now, obviously you can't get the same options exactly in either model because both Hyundai and Honda like to bundle their option packages and the bundling is a little bit different. Across the board, the Honda Accord is a little bit more comfortable in the front seats and the back seats, and it handles a little bit better than the Sonata. 
The difference is most marked in this Eco version versus that 2.4 liter engine in the Honda Accord with the CVT. Of course, if you don't like CVTs, then the Sonata is going to feel a little bit better. And without question, this Eco model with the seven speed dual clutch transmission is notably faster, notably peppier than that Honda Accord. The Sonata Eco will give you some of the best fuel economy in this segment, even though this is not a hybrid and it's not a CVT equipped vehicle. It also gives you slightly better performance. In fact, this is the top ranking four cylinder entry in this segment in terms of fuel economy so far. The Sonata has long been one of the least expensive entries in this segment and that continues even though the Sonata for 2015 isn't quite as good of a deal as it might have been in 2014. That means that we're still about $800 less than the Ford Fusion. We have more rear seat legroom and more rear seat headroom in real world tests in this vehicle than in the Fusion. We also get more standard power under the hood than that base engine that you get over in the Ford. Hyundai's 1.6 liter turbocharged engine is very evenly matched in terms of power delivery to that 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine, but the seven speed dual clutch transmission really gives this the performance lead over the Ford. The Ford is by far the best handler in this segment, even in that 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine. It ties with the Mazda 6 in just about every way when it comes to performance out on the road. I think that the overall look of the Ford Fusion is a little bit more handsome than this vehicle, but this does look a little bit more fresh. One thing is for sure, the interior of this vehicle is a slight notch above that Ford Fusion. Toyota's Camry is over $1,800 more expensive than the Sonata. Obviously, you're paying for Toyota's reliability reputation because the Sonata is a more attractive vehicle, in my opinion, inside and out. It's also considerably fresher because this last generation of the Toyota Camry is just a refresh. It wasn't a complete redesign like we're seeing in this vehicle. The Camry does have a V6 engine option. However, that V6 Camry is not faster than the two liter turbo under this hood. Toyota also does not offer an Eco model along the same lines of this vehicle or the EcoBoost version that we get in the Ford Fusion. Both Toyota and Honda do offer hybrid models that get better fuel economy than this. And interestingly enough, both models handle better than the Eco version that we're getting here. Again, that's largely down to those narrow tires. Nissan's Altima is about $1,150 less than this vehicle, and it's comparing base engine to base engine. The Altima does have an all CVT lineup, so even the V6 engine has a CVT as well. If you prefer a traditional stepped automatic transmission, then you may want to cross that vehicle off your list. However, Nissan's Altima with the 3.5 liter V6 engine is probably the fastest vehicle in this segment. It really does perform incredibly well, especially in a straight line. When the road gets windy, the Altima also handles a little bit better than the Sonata, thanks to its very light curb weight. The Sonata is an excellent handling vehicle, but it's not quite up to the same level as the Altima, the Fusion, or the Honda Accord. One of the best features about the Nissan Altima is its incredibly practical trunk. The Altima's trunk is very deep, and that allows you to put a 24-inch roller bag in the vertical position and still close the trunk lid. Hyundai actually bests that with a trunk that allows you to take that 24-inch roller bag, rotate it 90 degrees, and then stack four of them across the back in that vertical position and still close the trunk lid. Hyundai has long been one of the best values in the segment based primarily on pricing because you could always take a look at the price and you could say, I forgive the Hyundai Sonata for X, Y, or Z because the price is significantly lower than the competition. The Sonata is still one of the best values in the segment, but the pricing is not as low as it used to be. The Delta you'll notice is no longer thousands of dollars. In most cases, it's about a thousand dollars less expensive. Now Hyundai still has one of the best warranties in the segment, and that is a big factor if you do plan on keeping your car long term. We also have excellent fuel economy in this 1.6 liter turbocharged model. Well, Nissan's Altima with the 3.5 liter V6 is still my favorite entry in this segment because you get incredible performance and incredible fuel economy for a V6 entry. This is one of my top picks in the segment, and I would definitely take this over the current generation Toyota Camry, likely over the current generation Chrysler 200 and Ford Fusion, especially if you value rear seat comfort. I would definitely take this over the Volkswagen Passat as well. In fact, this reminds me a great deal of the Passat. The restrained styling inside and out, the general interior styling reminds me an awful lot of what Volkswagen used to be, which was sort of a premium entry that was value priced. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the 2015 Hyundai Sonata Eco. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of my latest videos. You can also find me over at facebook.com slash alexnautos, over at twitter as alexnautos, and you can always email your questions to alex at alexnautos.com. I'll see you next week.